Okay, well, I want to say, first of all, thanks for everybody for the support and getting the Low Carb Made Easy Facebook site up over 500 likes. Very impressed. Big like from me. Okay, <clears throat> so currently I'm in England and I've been stuck here in a holding pattern because I'm looking after my mother who's terminally ill and uh, she's refusing treatment, including my own sort of treatment, which probably would have made it better, but anyway, who cares? Um, so it's a long, drawn-out process. So in the meantime, I go up to London every week and I see patients on the weekend and I help people in the local area around here. Um, okay, so it's 20 years later after Low Carb Made Easy first came out. So 20 years, what have we learnt? Well, we've learnt that fat is good, like I've been telling everybody, that sugar is bad, that the, the sugar industry is basically like big tobacco, and uh, that statins are also bad for you or completely unnecessary. Note, case in point, uh, article today in the paper about the link of statins with diabetes, a 25% increase in the risk of diabetes for people who take statins. Okay, that's great. So what have I been doing in my spare time? Well, I've written another book um, based on uh, low carb made easy knowledge. And uh, that book is more of a story about a person rather than a book which is uh, an instruction about how to do it. I uh, just thought I'd just take a different approach because I've already written four other books. So um, that book, well, I'll make it available, but I've sort of been sidetracked with other plans and uh, other work, which I'll, I'll get to. Uh, so, we've been doing low carb for a long time now, so what should we be doing and what sort of things are going to help us to prolong the benefits of low carb? Obviously keeping weight off is a big benefit because naturally the risk of heart disease and diabetes and all these sort of things come with the, the gaining of the weight. So low carb made easy is a very specific technique for dropping weight. Like, we all know this now, okay? It's prob probably, in my opinion, it's probably the fastest way to lose weight is by the high-protein diet, okay? Now, most of us will basically just keep following low-carb made easy one way or another. Now, over the years, it has become more apparent to me that if you're basically just eating high-protein food all the time, there's a risk that you're going to become acidic. Okay, so there's a very easy way around this. And the thing is, of course, unless we're in that free fall weight loss mode, there's no reason that we should become acidic. So one of the things that we do is we use eating more vegetables and not as much protein. And the other thing which I made clear, I think at the beginning of the year or the end of last year was that you can substitute the meat that you're eating with fish. Now, of course, fish is very alkaline. So if you have basically just taking the steak and the lamb and all this sort of stuff out and putting fish in its place, you're not going to have a problem, okay? And also it's omega-3, it's good for the heart. Now, one of the things that I do is I get bicarbonate of soda. Now, I bought this in the local shop. It cost one pound, which is about two dollars, okay? That will last you for, for about six months, I'd say. You take you take a level teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, put it in warm water, and you drink it on an empty stomach in the morning. Now, bicarbonate of soda is incredibly alkaline. Now, the thing is, it, it will raise your pH, it lowers the acidity, and you can overdo it, okay? So a level teaspoon is enough. Now, something else which you should look into is the connection between treating cancer with bicarbonate of soda. So once you've finished watching this, get on the internet and watch uh, the protocols of using bicarbonate of soda and cancer. Now you'll find that mixing bicarbonate of soda with molasses and following the protocol is, uh, has helped hundreds, thousands of people basically rid the body of cancer, okay? So I've got a friend in Australia who has helped, personally helped hundreds of people like this. And of course, I've got the bicarbonate of soda here to help my mum, but she doesn't want to take it. So what I do instead is I mix the bicarbonate of soda up with molasses and I put it on her um, basal cell carcinoma that she has on her head, on her hands, which is, which is the uh, origin of the cancer. Now, after 12 hours of 
baiting these wounds with the molasses and the bicarbonate of soda, these skin cancers just fall off. So just on the subject of skin cancer, because we are Australians and, and we know uh, the risk of skin cancer, another thing that I managed to get for my mum was iodine. Now the thing is, if you put iodine on a skin cancer twice a day, eventually that skin cancer will turn brown and then it just drops off and you've got pink, healthy skin underneath. Now, of course, I went into town to try and find iodine. You know what I'm talking about, iodine, like the sort of thing that you put on cuts. Well, you reckon I could buy iodine? I went to about five or six different chemists looking for iodine. And eventually I went into London to one of the larger chemists and I st stood there and asked them if they had iodine. Now, the chemist came out and he said to me, we have not been able to buy iodine for the last seven years. All right. Now, of course, people could hear my conversation in the, and people in the shop. Right. So I said, uh, OK, everybody, I want your attention. So everybody stopped. The other chemist came out and I said, the reason why you cannot buy iodine in the UK at the moment is because about 10, 15 years ago, people started putting iodine on their skin cancers and the European Union has now taken it out of circulation. And the, not, the both the chemists just stood there and they nodded, right, because it was true. Now, my partner went to Lithuania and she came back with a couple of bottles of uh, iodine. <clears throat> now, I've been using this iodine on, uh, on my mum, experimenting basically on her. And the same thing happens. Basically, they turn brown, they drop off. So there's another little home remedy for you for f treating yourself for the skin cancer. Okay, what else we got? Juicing. Okay, so a few people have mentioned juicing. Yep, juicing's great. When I go up to London, my, my partner basically makes juices and, and yeah, they're great, they're fine. Um, you can do them. They're just regarded as a moderate carb, okay? And of course, my opinion is that all the real goodness is basically still in the juicing machine, okay? Unless you've got the vitamizer that vitamizes it all up and you drink that sludge, then you're getting the benefit. But of course, you're liberating all the carbs, you know, making it easy to digest. It will raise your blood sugar levels. Just be careful about the, the carrot and the apple and things like this. Be very, you know, if it's bitter, like with the kale and celery and so on, you're laughing, okay? So the same rules apply as far as uh, low carb made easy goes. Okay, what else can we talk about? Water, all right? So if you're doing low carb made easy, you need to be drinking lots of water. Now, I was drinking about three liters a day. Uh, and of course, having to run to the toilet all the time, <clears throat> which started becoming such a drag. So I'm thinking that you should be drinking around about two and a quarter to two and a half liters a day of water. You need to be forcing that into yourself. Now, it's not hard. One of these bottles is 750 ml. All you need to do is drink two of these and have three cups of tea. And basically, there you go. You've, you've got 225, uh, 2,225 milliliters of fluid into your system. Because I'm stuck at my mother's place and she won't let me cook, I can't prepare my own food. Okay, So it's incredibly difficult for me to basically eat the right things. So. I have to eat basically what she wants me to eat, which is incredibly microwaved, ready prepared meals. So what do you do in this sort of situation? Okay, either you starve or you just have to bite the bullet and eat the food that you like. I know it's carcinogenic. It's all these sort of other things and it's got the wrong sort of uh, components to it. So I'm going to show you how to get around that problem. And this is a technique that my teacher showed me when I was an, a young man in my early 20s studying Chinese medicine. He taught me how to eat. Now, 30 years later, I remembered these lessons. I've always known that basically what he showed me was the truth. It was exactly how we should eat. So the technique is like this. When you eat a morsel of food, you put it in your mouth and you start chewing. OK, when you are ready to swallow that food, you swallow it and then you just stop. OK, and you let that food go down the throat. You feel it going down the esophagus and you wait until you can actually feel it in your stomach. OK, it takes about four to five seconds, maybe seven seconds. OK, you feel it going all the way down and eventually it reaches the stomach. 
When it reaches the stomach, you pick up the next piece of food, you put it in your mouth, and you start chewing again. Okay? He said, never put one mouthful of food over the top of another one, okay? Which meant you wait until this mouthful of food has gone to the stomach before you eat the next piece. Now, if you are in a situation like I am, where basically I can't control my food, I'm going to have to break my diet, and, um, and of course, I can't lose weight in this process, but I can stop myself from gaining weight and I can actually lose weight if I eat properly, okay? Now, I want you to try this, okay? Right after this, your very next meal, I want you to stop, I want you to sit, put the mouthful of food in your mouth, chew it, swallow, and then just sit there and wait for that food to go down to your stomach. Wait, be patient, and when it reaches your stomach, then take the next morsel of food and do it again. Eat your meal like this and see what happens. If you can spend one meal eating this way, you're gonna learn something profound. If you spend a day eating like this, you've basically mastered how to eat, okay? Has anyone ever taught you how to eat? No, well, I'm teaching you now. Then I wanna hear feedback, all right? All you people who are basically gonna do it, I wanna get feedback of what you experience by doing it this way. Okay, so my present situation. Soon I'm gonna go back to Bali and I'm basically gonna go back to treating the locals over there and helping people doing oxygen therapy. It's one of the things which I did when I was in, the, in uh, all over the world, basically, helping people who are terminally ill. Uh, if you don't know anything about oxygen therapy, just look it up. I've got a video, and I'll try and clean this video up. It's a talk that I did whilst I was in Bali about oxygen therapy. It goes for about half an hour and had a huge uh, response. Um, I'll let you watch that. The other thing, too, is you want to read my book about Afghanistan. Those of you which... Uh, probably don't know it, but I've written a autobi autobiographical account of my five years in Afghanistan. If you haven't read it, you should read it, okay? Because it, because what I'm working on now is basically trying to shed more light on the monetary system and how money is basically created. Now, it may sound totally off base, but if you read my book, it talks about the, basically the corruption in the war on Afghanistan and basically the things that happened, the things that I saw and the things that I experienced. Now I've been working on a new project, which is a talk, goes for about two hours, about how money is created, how the financial system works and basically what we need to do with our government. The bottom line is we need to print our own money, okay? Now, if you don't understand what that means, you'll find out, okay? We don't actually print money. We have somebody else do it for us and they charge interest and they reap phenomenal profit, which basically makes us all debt slaves. So this is what I'm working on at the moment. Okay, that's pretty much about it. Um, if you are hearing this transmission, you are part of the resistance. Thanks for all your help and I'll talk to you later.